My encounter with the unknown occurred on the slopes of the Blue Ridge Mountains in the Linville Gorge Wilderness back in October of 2017. It was me and my brother trucking it along the Forest Service Road that leads to a few camping spots and spur trails. The Forest Service Road led to a place known as Wiseman's View, a place of mystery and beauty. We made our way along the road looking for spots to camp. Most of the spots were either taken or overgrown with vegetation. To note, our cell service was not the best. We finally decided to pull off. My brother spoke up and said, Hey, look, there's a trail. To the far right of the pull-off parking lot was a single trail. It looked like a hiking trail that led into the wilderness. I pulled the car in tight, began unpacking and gearing up to hike in. I and my brother made our way along the trail with no issues. We got down to the Linville River and began looking for camping spots to hang our hammocks. After we settled in for a while, I decided I needed to make a call or two. The problem was, there was no service, not even a bar. I yelled over to my brother, who was fishing a little bit upriver, to let him know I needed to run to my car and get better service to make those calls. He acknowledged, and I went up the trail towards my car. The hike was filled with sounds of birds chirping and insects humming. I started to get lost in the moment because it was just so humble and nice out. All those nice, pleasant thoughts suddenly ceased, though. The forest. It was suddenly silent. Like grave silence. What? I said as I slowed my pace and continued. The air grew heavy, almost damp. I got the feeling I was being watched, looking in all directions for anything or anyone. I saw nothing. The silence continued for just a few minutes, then returned as if someone pushed play on a paused movie. Okay, that was freaking weird. I said out loud as I picked up my pace and continued. Finally, I made it to my car after some time. I sat inside my car for quite a while, talking with my friend on the phone and telling him about the weird experience I had just had. He kind of made fun of me, and we both laughed about it. After I finished talking on the phone with my friend, I reached in my glove box for my pistol. I usually brought it with me for protection. I racked around and stepped back out onto the trail once again. The sounds of the forest were alive. The sun is out, not a cloud in the sky. I smile, and I made my way along the trail back to camp. Once again, the sound stopped. It was like it was paused, dead silent once more. Okay. What is really going on here? As that last word left my mouth, I heard it. It was a very heavy, very interesting, almost dragging sound. It was like something was dragging something heavy through the twigs and leaves, snapping them as if it were coming down the mountain. I have never run so fast down a mountain in my life. To this day, I do not know what I encountered. I never technically saw anything, but I have a strong feeling it was some sort of cryptid. Maybe a Bigfoot, maybe something else. Thank you for sharing my encounter. This is a true story. Not one of the details I will mention is made up or fabricated. It may not sound strange to you, considering the crazy stories you are used to, but believe me, this was one sure strange story. I believe this might be of extraterrestrial variety. It was terrifying, and I have never been so scared in my life. So in this contribution, I will go by Jim. I am overly excited to share this true story with the world, and thank you for the opportunity to do so. A couple of years ago, out on a mini weekend vacation with my girlfriend Vanna, we had probably the strangest occurrence that we have ever not been able to explain. In the summer of 2018, I and my girlfriend loved to go exploring around the Blue Ridge Mountains and streams of eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina. It was our escape from the world being both nature lovers. We loved the freedom of the forest and spent many a night in the car or camping away from civilization and have never had anything scary happen to us. It is safe to say that after this happened, 
we cut out wilderness outings to almost zero compared to every single weekend. Not how it was before, that's for sure. We were, and still are, freaked out. It happened to us extremely late one night around 3 or 4 in the morning. We actually live in the Smoky Mountains, and decided to take an overnight joyride over the mountains somewhere on the Blue Ridge Parkway. We pulled off every overlook, just to look around. There was no traffic and no lights up there. It was beautiful. My girlfriend and I are super in love and never thought anything would terrify us and ruin our beautiful getaway as badly as it did that night. At one pull-off, we got out and were looking at the stars together. As we were looking at the sky, every star was visible and burning brightly. We were in such a moment of peace with no traffic or anyone around for miles, just us in the dark sky. When all of a sudden, the stars we were looking at started moving in different directions. Just to disclose this, we were not on drugs, and we had not been drinking. The stars started moving in all directions. The feeling was not one of fear, but one of great peace as we stared at them floating around in the sky. It was quite simply beautiful. We watched for a few seconds until a sound from the forest down the ridge broke us out of our peaceful silence. It sounded robotic, and sort of alien. Like if a robot could growl while saying womp womp. This would be the sound we heard. We did not look at each other. We did not signal each other. We just ran like hell as fast as we could to jump in the car. I cut my arm on the rain visor jumping into the car. We knew we had to get away, far away, but the beauty turning into terror was just the beginning. We were alone and flooring it off the mountain, driving back towards a town when we saw headlights behind us. It was a company van of some kind. Neither of us remembers the riding on the side of the van. We got into town and stopped, and so did the van. We saw the outline of the man in the van, and he followed us. Intuitively, I stopped to see if he would stop, and sure enough, he stopped and pretended to work in his van. We took off only to finally realize we lost him. After driving for a little while longer, we made sure he was lost. We hit the interstate, making sure he was not behind us once more. At the next rest stop, we decided to stop to refresh ourselves and regain our composure. Neither of us really saying anything except what the heck was that all about? When from the other direction comes that same exact van, with the same man at the wheel, which was impossible unless two twins were driving the same truck from each of our directions, which is very unlikely, almost impossible odds, it was the same guy. He glanced at us and was obviously trying to pretend he was not following us. I jumped out of the car to yell and demand an explanation from them, but an overwhelming fear enveloped me all of a sudden. I loved being a tough guy in front of my girl, but I had a sinking feeling that I would be better off if we ran. So that's exactly what we did. At this point, we were so freaked out we drove to the next Walmart and stayed the night in the parking lot where there were lights and other people in safety. I did not see any more duplicated vans or stars moving or robotic alien voices from then on. But something was trying to take us, and we were lucky enough to get away. Thank you for hearing our story. To this day, we have no idea what those stars were doing, what that sound was, what that duplicated van and man were, I cannot say. But we both get chills from the events and have drastically, sadly decreased our joy rides almost to none. Whatever made that sound, whatever the hell that was, I don't know. I still have nightmares about it to this day. Thank you again for sharing our story. A couple of years ago, I went hiking alone on different trails on the Blue Ridge Parkway. For some reason, I thought it would be okay for a 20-something woman to go alone. Stupid, I know. I always wanted to visit Mount Mitchell, so I made the trek up there. This was on a Monday, so there were not a ton of visitors. The path to the summit is paved, so it's a fairly easy walk, but it is a bit steep. I was a smoker at the time, so I was quite out of breath. I finally got to the top and stood there, trying to catch my breath. 
I see someone step awfully close to me out of the corner of my eye. I look up and it's a man, probably in his late forties, with greasy, dark brown hair. He says, hey, I noticed you took a while to get up here, and you're breathing really hard. Are you okay? I was kind of taken aback, but I replied saying I was fine and that I'm just a smoker, and I kind of laughed to make light of the situation. He just stood there, looking at me, so I made a little nod to let him know I was going to walk away. I walked over to the podiums that show you the direction you are looking, and what mountains and cities are the way in that distance. He followed me. He started talking out of nowhere about how he had recently been divorced, and was part of a men's group that traveled around the country to lots of famous tourist spots. He asked where I was from, and I reluctantly told him. He proceeded to tell me intimate details of why he got divorced. He told me he suspected his wife of cheating on him, so he hid in a closet one night and caught her and a co-worker in bed together. He grumbled. They both paid dearly for that night. I tried to make it visibly obvious that I was uncomfortable, but he kept talking and asking me questions without pausing to let me even answer. I concluded that he was simply lonely and wanted someone to talk to. Then I realized there was no one else with him the entire time, and I had not noticed any other men with him, or any men's group at all for that matter. But maybe they split up and went their separate ways for a while. At any rate, I became increasingly more nervous, so I let him know I was going to head back down to the gift shop. Again, he started following me. There are lots of trails that branch off from the main path to the summit, but I was not interested in going to any of these places with this guy, especially being so out of breath. I was not walking with the man now, but he was following me. He called out to me loudly, Hey! I turned around and he was grinning ear to ear. His hair somehow looked even greasier. He said, Why don't we go walking on one of these trails? I could show you a really good time. I replied, no thank you, sternly. I looked to my left, and there were two elderly women sitting on a bench. I realized they had been watching us. One of the women called to the man, I think it's time the young lady gets going now. I gave her a soft smile and a nod. I turned around and walked at a brisk pace down the road. Passing the gift shop, going straight to my car, the man had not followed me luckily. That was my last hike of the day and I'm glad that nothing worse happened while I was alone. I do not go on outings like that by myself anymore, and I would highly suggest anybody listening to this show, always take a hiking buddy. This goes way back to 1977, when I was 18 years old. My boyfriend Mike was almost 20. We lived near the Blue Ridge Mountains in the George Washington National State Forest in Virginia. This was a beautiful place that we frequented often during all seasons. We went backpacking, did day hikes, inner tubing, and canoeing. One summer day, after packing a picnic lunch and grabbing our suits, we drove his red Mopar muscle car to a spot near a small river, and the hike would only be about a mile. The path, though narrow, was well maintained and on a slight decline most of the way. The temperature cooled a bit as the forest closed around us. While we hiked further in from the road, finding the perfect spot, a blanket was spread out right on the banks of the constantly babbling brook. After the hike, a dip in the water was first on our agenda, so we obliged. At the spot we had chosen, the water was up to our knees so we managed to cool off well enough. We decided to have some of our goodies, simple things like cheese, fruit, and of course a knife to slice our edibles. Resting as lovers do, we stretch out in the blanket and embrace one another. Eventually, we stopped paying attention to our surroundings. Suddenly, Mike became uneasy. He said he felt like we were being watched. I scoffed at him and sat up, cross-legged, facing the river. He mimicked my movements, but he was tense still listening. There was a sound. I heard it now. It was not a forest noise. It wasn't like twigs snapping or leaves rustling. It was a broken rhythm of the river's flow. No more babbling, more like plops and splashes. 
The sound was so out of place neither of us seemed to be able to recognize what it could be. Then suddenly, he appeared, walking down this shallow, rock-filled river. He was 5'8", medium build, dark hair, and totally naked, except for his black, high-top Converse shoes. Mike and I were totally shocked and almost found it funny. The guy seemed incredibly surprised to see us, covering his crotch and immediately squatting. He appeared to be quite embarrassed and said he did not realize anyone was around. Being young and naive and kind people as well, we tried to ease this man's discomfort by chatting a bit, trying to make a weird situation a little less weird. At this point, I am still not feeling any danger from this man until he invites himself to our picnic, gets out of the river, walks to our blanket, and crouches down between me and Mike. My eyes are wide as I look into Mike's eyes while this guy keeps chattering, then picks up our knife and starts dropping blade first into the dirt, picking it up and repeating this action over and over, the whole time not looking at either of us just at the knife. Mike looks at me and with head movements conveys that I need to gather everything immediately. As I begin, Mike grabs a knife from the guy, who seems startled at the sudden flourish of activity. I have everything in hand. Mike gives me the knife and guides me in front of him as he grabs a large and solid branch from the forest floor. We are walking very quickly and the guy is following, telling us to wait up for him. I walk right by his clothes, turns out he had been watching us all along, and decided to strip and go in the water. After we see his clothes so close to where we were, we began rushing up the path to the parking lot. This guy fell a bit behind as he stumbled and hopped while putting on his clothes. Staying in forward motion, as to not lose us. We got to the parking lot, and the doors were locked, slowing us down. The guy is begging, practically crying that we go to his house and party. We jump in the car, lock the doors, and get the heck out of there. The entire time, the guy is still right at my window, telling me I would like the partying at his farmhouse, and I would like his 12-year-old daughter. We are still totally ignoring him, not saying a word, and Mike hits the gas pedal hard and sprayed a shower of gravel on our creeper as we drove away. I don't know what's going on with the water in the Blue Ridge Mountains, but definitely don't drink it, because it's making people act straight weird. I'm starting off by saying this may not be paranormal, but I absolutely cannot explain what happened, and I'm struggling to understand. I am also still super anxious right now, even though it happened hours ago. Me and my boyfriend like to do random stuff at night, so I suggested we go on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Keep in mind, it was about 9.45. We drive for a little bit and go across a medium-sized bridge. If you're driving at 45 miles per hour, you could cross it in maybe a little under a minute, and we would see a man just kind of standing near the edge of the bridge kind of looking off in the distance on the bridge. I get a little concerned because people don't usually take walks on the Blue Ridge Parkway at almost 10 p.m., or even in general, and then stop on the side of a bridge and just look off. I then tell my boyfriend we should turn around because I don't want him to jump or anything. We turned around and we are about two to three minutes away from the bridge at this point. We turn around and head back in that direction. I get a super bad wave of anxiety, just really bad vibes. We drive by the spot he was and he was gone. I was of course terrified because you know where did he go? Where could he have gone? We get to the other side of the bridge and there he is staring into the woods on the complete opposite side of the bridge, maybe like a 20 foot walk away from the end of the bridge. There are no trails over there and I would also like to mention it is very thick woods. He was wearing a backpack and a hat I believe and he was just standing there facing away from the road so we could not really see any of his facial features. So, we drive back to turn around and leave the parkway to go home, and we fully expected to see him standing in a different spot, or the same spot staring off into some odd place again. But, he was gone. Either this was some strange coincidence that perfectly aligned to seem creepy as hell, or I just experienced something really weird. What freaks me out the most is that we never once saw him move at all. He just stared at nothing, and I am freaked out and also concerned about this guy. What if he jumped? What if something happened to him? I just want to know if he is okay, or what the heck was going on out there. 
I know people in my town are tweaking sometimes, but it did not really seem like that. The dude was just standing straight up, staring off and then just disappeared. There were no side roads around that he could have walked on either. I would also like to mention that we were a bit away from people as well. Probably a 15 minute drive to the nearest town on the parkway. It was really bizarre and creepy to see a guy late at night being that deep into the parkway, especially if he had walked. About a month ago, I moved into the house near the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. It is very secluded. Everything was great up until about a week ago, when strange things started to happen. Not like paranormal, but just strange. So, I knew moving in that I would have about one acre to myself, which is nice. The acre itself is just about all thick, dense woods. Towards the back, you cannot even go any deeper because the land is too rigid and the trees block a clear path of sight into anything. Now, I live alone in this tiny house at the moment. My brother and his dog are moving in in just a couple of weeks. The house is small and its basement has a sliding door to the backyard, which has a little tiny picket fence and could be knocked down completely if someone was to just let the wind blow on it, to be honest. I decided I would start fixing it up for my brother's dog until he becomes well trained enough to know when to come back home and stuff. This is when the first creepy thing happened. I left to go to Lowe's to just buy some basic wood for a fence, just enough to make sure the dog could not leap over it if he tried. As I was coming back home, I noticed a man on my doorstep looking inside my house through the side window. Even though any person could have heard me pulling into my driveway, he did not even flinch at all, even when I slammed my car door shut. Eventually, at this point, I kind of uneasily said, Can I help you? To which the man replied, I'm just your neighbor and I wanted to say hello. I went out of my way to put the wood I was carrying in my hand on the ground and went to shake his hand and he did not even move again. He just stared at my hand. After this very weird encounter, I was more of just done with him. So I said that I was very busy, I was fixing my fence, and that it would be nice to meet him on another day. He stayed at the front of my house for about another two minutes watching me put all my wood inside. He was looking into and around my house in the process. Creeped out at this point, I closed the door in his face and went about my business. About two days later, after fixing my fence, another woman, and this one looking nicer and having put a little appearance into her look, greeted me kindly and told me about herself. Now, I will call her Mrs. H. Mrs. H was just explaining how people do not normally move around here, and I was the first in about 11 years to move in. She went on to explain the rest of my neighbors, whom I knew were around, and that most of them liked to stay to themselves. After a pleasant talk with Mrs. H, I asked her about the man from two days ago. Now this guy was about six foot. He was old but not too old, probably mid-fifties, had brown eyes, was in decent shape, and had gray hair. Mrs. H went on to explain that that person who lived here before me was a widow, and her teenage daughter, who she homeschooled, had left because this perv started to stalk her daughter. More nonsense was said, and she eventually left, and that was that. Last night, though, I heard tapping on my window at exactly 2.37 a.m. I know this because I looked at my clock. Now, my window is a good four feet above the actual ground, and I figured it was just a bird or something at first, so I attempted to go back to bed. No less than two minutes after silence, the tapping came back, but this time turned into three loud bangs. Immediately, I ran to the closet and grabbed my hunting twenty-two and hid behind my bed. Peeking over, I saw a figure looking into it. After being scared out of my soul for about thirty seconds, the familiar voice of that perv shouted, I need your help. Not knowing what to do, I threw my curtain open, and the only thing between his forehead and my twenty-two was a half an inch thick glass of window. He then did not say a word. Not a don't shoot, not a I still need help, nothing. He then pointed behind him to the fence I was building. I then ran outside to see what he wanted, with the gun on him the entire time. I said, what is wrong? And he said nothing, but pointed to the fence again. I looked, and this time I saw the fence. It had seemed to be run over by a car, with mud tracks stomping, and then reversed over in the grass. I looked at the fifty-something-year-old's car, 
whom Vuch's tires were dirty and had tracks coming from my backyard. Pissed at what I saw, I yelled at him, What the actual hell are you doing? And then put my finger on the trigger of the 22, which he finally replied, Your fence. He then got back into his car and left. All while I still had the 22 pointed at him. It is currently 3 p.m. on March 2nd, and I have scrapped the entire fence idea out of sheer exhaustion and fear. This has all really happened and is currently happening. I will keep you guys updated with the situation. I have not contacted the police quite yet because I don't know if he meant to run into my fence or not. But either way, I have no idea why he was in my driveway, let alone in my property at all.